Hey Way fam, we're so excited to see you here on a Way World Outreach Sermon. Thank you for tuning in. Now let's get ready for this week's word. We talk about big obedience and, and this is a word that is the foundation of our Christian walk. What I mean by that is, is that Jesus said this, come, follow me. And he wasn't just saying, hang out with me. This is what he meant, follow my lead or follow my instructions. And then Jesus told the disciples before he left to heaven, Jesus died, resurrected from the dead, and then he went to heaven. And he had a private meeting with his disciples and he gave them instructions. And this is what he says. He goes, go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them my commandments. But he said, not even, not just teaching them my commandments, teaching them to obey my commandments. So he said, teach them how to follow me. You follow me and then teach them how to follow me. The reason we're not making more disciples, and I want you to get this, this is a command from God for every single believer. You're not just supposed to get this and hold on to it. You're supposed to get this and give it to someone else. Help them get their breakthrough. But this is what I've learned. If you can't lead yourself, how can you lead anybody else? So how we lead ourselves, we have to lead ourselves to new choices. And, how, and you know what's so different from, from animals and people is that we have free will. You know, I was reading scripture this week and, and this is what I saw. There was a day that Jesus was in a storm and the disciples were in a boat and there was this big, huge storm. And then Jesus got up and he said, wind and it goes, wind and waves be calm. And you know what the scripture says? That the wind and the waves obeyed. And when I thought about that, I go, winds and waves obey, but people sometimes don't obey. And then he came across another situation where he was casting out a demon. And he told the demon that was in this person named Legion, he goes, come out. And you know what the demon did? He went out of the person. And then I started thinking, Sometimes demons obey, and we don't obey. Could it be crazy that demons obey more than we do? Wind obeys, waves obey, demons obey, and then God tells us to do something. We say, I don't think so, or I'm not ready. Then we wonder why we stay in the storms, why we stay in the mess, why there's no impact, why we can't change no one else's life, why no one's getting saved, why we're not happy, why we're not free, why we're not living the abundant life that God has for us. A big key, big key to beginning to enjoy the life that God has for us is this, follow instructions. And, and also understand this, if you're not obeying God, you're obeying somebody. That's the other problem, right? So, so why obey God? I'm going to give you just a review from Sunday. Number one, we obey God. I'm going to give you hopefully three reasons why we obey God today. And I'm going to say hopefully because I'm not rushing through anything tonight. I want to get, I want to get this in our system. I, I don't want God, I don't want the Holy Spirit to get off, off, off this subject until we get it. Because until we get it, we'll never get everything that we want in life. Do you, do, you, do you get this? You were created to obey God. So when you're not doing what you were created to do, there's always something missing, right? We're created to live for God. So Joshua 1, so number one, what's the first reason why we obey God? Obedience to God's instructions, and I'm not going to go deep into this because I did it Sunday, always leads us to Success. Say it with me. Obedience to God's instructions always lead to always leads to success. So when God is giving us instructions, He's not trying to mess up your life. He's trying to get you to where you want to get to. He wants He wants you to experience victory, breakthrough, happiness. God is giving instructions. Now we could obey the instructions and stay lost, or we can follow instructions. Now the word success. Joshua 1, it says this, study this book of instruction continually. So before you came to Christ, you used to do things all the time. What was the things you used to do all the time? Some of us were partying. 
all the time. You are actually partier. You, you, you can say, I'm a partier. What do you do? I'm a partier. Right? Some of you were fighting all the time. It don't matter where you go. You go to orange shows picking a fight. What are you looking at? You're fighting all the time. Some of us were drinking all the time. Some of us were talking and gossiping all the time. Right? I don't know what you were doing all the time. But this is what God is saying. Stop doing what you are doing all the time and start doing this. Start studying my word all the time. Right? And when you start doing that, you're going to start changing your life and your results. So you study the word continually. You'll never succeed in an area that you're inconsistent in. To get breakthrough, to get victory, to become strong in any area of your life, you must have consistency. You'll never have a great solid life with spotty commitments. You guys understand that? Is that right? It's whether it's in school, whether it's serving God, work. You're spotting your attendance at work. Don't get a, you're not going to get a full paycheck. We're not full paycheck. Well, why don't you show up full, full time and you won't get a part-time paycheck if you keep, you get part-time paychecks when you show up part-time. See, we want full-time results in our marriages, in our relationship with God, in our ministries, but we want to give part-time effort. Or we want to obey like uh, whatever we feel like obeying. Right, you guys got that? So study this book of instruction. How often? Continues all the time. This is what I do. I, I do this. I do this. I study the Word all the time. And I, I, I told you guys on this vacation, God really spoke to me. He goes, yeah. He goes, this is what God told me. He goes, yeah, you study the book all the time, but you study to preach. I'm sure if they had to preach every Sunday, they'd study all like that too. He goes, because, you know what he told me? That don't even count. He goes, that's your occupation. That's what he told me. I go, Holy Spirit, calm down. Calm out there a little bit. I'm only human. <laughs> no, but when you get mature, God starts breaking it down to you. He don't have to like, he don't have to go around the issues. Come on, Marco, come on, wake up. Yeah, you studied to preach because you don't like, want to look like a fool standing up there and have nothing to say. Well, that's true. That's true. He goes, but I don't want you to study to perform. I want you to study to know me. He goes, where's our time where we're just hanging out so I could talk to you and we could speak? I go, okay. Now that's instruction. And what he was telling me, you study to perform, but I want you to study to know me. How many of those two different things? So, so, so now I'm making sure I'm, putting my, I'm adjusting my schedule so I can study continually. I downloaded some stuff on my phone so everywhere I am, I could just open it up. I'm studying continually and it's changing my vocabulary. It's changing my, my you know what's changing? My reference points. Now what's, what happens is when I'm going through this, this is what happens. I, I bring up a story I just read. I go, oh, it's just like, and if you hang out with me, if I'm studying the Word, I'm going to be bringing up the Word every two seconds. It was just like in Luke chapter 1, they said this. Luke chapter 4 said this. Oh, I just read this morning. Have you ever been there? I just read this morning. This is what God wants to do. He wants to speak to you, but He's saying, I want to speak to you all the time. So it's time to start studying the Word of God all the time. I should have named this all the time. And then He says, meditate on it day and night. Night. That means there's going to be certain thoughts that you're going to have to say, I no longer would allow that thought to control my thinking. Because there's certain thoughts that are controlling your thinking that's messing up your life. There's thoughts that come into your mind that you're saying, I'm no longer thinking that. Because it stops me thinking on what I should be thinking about. What should we be thinking about day and night? What? The Word. The word. Well, isn't that a little radical? Come on, man. I mean, when we were full of lust, you couldn't look at a girl without the... Ay, mamacita. Eh. You couldn't see a girl that was good looking pass by without whistling in the hood. 
because you couldn't stop thinking. It was day and night. And some of us are Christians and you're still full of lust. He said, well, I thought God delivered me. Yes, he delivered you, but this is a problem. You're still meditating on what you got delivered from. And because you're still meditating on what you got delivered from day and night, this is what happens. You're not experiencing change. So just because you're saved doesn't mean you don't, I want you to get this, doesn't mean your mind saved. Your spirit was saved, but your mind still needs to be renewed. And what God is saying, I will change you. I will transform you. I will change your marriage. I'll change your future. I'll change your results if I can change your thinking. Now, meditating on God's word day and night is a command. It's not a suggestion. He goes, I just suggest that you do this. Right? Has there, has there, has there ever been a thought that ever just took control of your mind? Like took control, like depression. Or, for me, you know what was a big one? Jealousy. I was crazy. When jealousy controls your mind, all you could do is think about a next question. Lisa, where were you? I was at church. I went by the church. You weren't there. I drove by. You mean you drove by? Weren't you supposed to be at work? I took a break, and when I was on break at work, I drove by the church. Well, what time did you stop by the church? Well, it was around 2 o'clock. Well, 2 o'clock, I left the church. Oh, how convenient. <laughs> Leaving the church right when I'm driving by. <laughs> you get crazy. I mean, you start seeing texts from their mothers. They say, who's, who's, who's texting you? It's my mama. Yeah, right. <laughs> I would do that too. Put mom when you want to have a side boyfriend. I know that old trick. I tried it myself. I mean, you know, you go cuckoo. So I, I was dealing with this thing. And you know what I was doing? Meditating on it day and night. And I, and I, I would come to church. I said, God, set me free. And I would even say, God, forgive me. And you know what God would do? He'd forgive me, but I was never free. And then I go, and then I did that prior on 20 times. And getting worse every time. And I told, I told God finally, go, God, what's up? Because your word says, who the Son sets free is free indeed. How come I'm not free? And then he told me, Marco, am I the problem or are you the problem? Here we go, Holy Spirit. Come, calm out there. Calm down. And, he, and I go, well, I'm, you're never the problem. I must be the problem. He goes, you are the problem. He goes, you know what the problem is? You've not changed your mind about the jealousy. You don't like the way it feels. You don't like what it does. But there's a problem. You still want to ask one more question. Your mind is still controlled by that old mindset. If you want to, be get, set, you want to get set free, it's time for you to let that thought go. Let those questions go. Turn away from it and start meditating on what I say. And God made a deal with me. He goes, Marco, up, let's shake. This is what I'll do. I'll set you free but you can never ask another jealous question again. Because if you ask another jealous question again, it's all gonna come back. See, this is the issue we're running into nowadays is that we wanna add God to our mess. And God says, I won't, add, I see, I won't walk with your mess. I need you to get rid of your mess. Be, stop, stop walking in your mess. Stop talking. See, it's time for you to break up with your sin, break up with your past once and for all. I say, I'm done. So we're, we got to get some, let's, someone say, let's do something about it. So when a thought comes and it's not consistent with the word, you need, to, you need to say no, and you might even have to scream once in a while. I don't care if any of your neighbors think you're crazy. Just, you're better off just screaming and saying no to that thought with some aggressiveness or it's going to take over your mind. I've learned this. The devil comes real quiet and real nice. He comes with little nice suggestions. Just, just one drink, uno. Just, just a little, 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 just a sip, not a drink, just a sip. Just take the edge off, a little sip. You don't, you don't, you don't have to watch pornography. Just do this. When the Victoria's Secret, 
brochure comes, just take a look at it. That's not pornography. Just relax. You're a little too religious, don't you think? (laughs) And you know what you got to do? Because that's how the devil comes. He comes quiet. He comes with suggestions. And he wants to take over your meditation. Because once he takes over your meditation, he takes over who you're becoming. And once he takes over who you're becoming, he takes over your actions. And when he takes over your actions, he takes over your results. It's time for us to say, no! Someone say, be aggressive. Meditate on it day and what does that mean? All the time. Here we go. That's the message. All the time. All the time. So you have to be intentional all the time. I'm thinking about God's word all the time. That means I got to start saying no to other thoughts all the time. And it says, so you will be sure to obey everything. And so why are we meditating on God's word? So we will obey. So we will what? Obey. That means we're not here to just hear. We're here to do. You'll never get results by just hearing. You only get results by application. Some will say, I will apply. I am not here coming to church today to just hear an inspiring message. I am here for my life and my results and my family and my future and my emotions that change once and for all. Not tomorrow. It's going to start today. I will get to my location. Right? And then written in it, so you obey, be sure to obey everything. Does it say everything? I've learned this, a partial obedience is disobedience. Partial obedience is disobedience. Okay? And it says this, only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. So, so, I want to prosper and succeed. And all that word succeed, it's not a, it's not a to, all, all this word says is I will have the desired result. I will accomplish what is attempted. I will prosper. I will do well. I will grow. I will thrive. Does anybody want to grow? Does anybody want to thrive? Does anybody want to prosper? Does anybody want to get, anybody want to get the desired result? Does anybody want to accomplish what you've, you're attempting to accomplish? Does anybody want that? Does anybody have some goals? Does anybody have some dreams? This is what God is saying. If you just follow my instructions, this is what it says. You will succeed, and I love this, in everything, in all you do. In what? If you're not succeeding in an area, usually this is the cause you're not listening to God's instruction in that area. Me and Lisa have a very successful marriage. Oh, oh, you guys are lucky. I'm not lucky. Lisa ain't lucky. Lisa didn't grow up in a Christian home. Every, I want you to know, Lisa, before I met her, I never met her brothers. Every single one of her brothers died of cirrhosis of the liver. I met Lisa. She was a, a, lo, a, a lone kid. Her mother was an alcoholic, a wino. Before we got married, her mom died of cirrhosis of the liver. Lisa never went to church her whole life. Lisa, Lisa, matter of fact, she she don't even know who her biological parents are. As soon as she was born, she was given up. You know, Lisa was going from one relationship after another relationship after another relationship, raped, abused. It was nonstop. That was her story. It just never stopped. That was Lisa's story. That's how she grew up. With no value, no one ever saying you're worth anything. She told, she told me, I felt like a piece of trash in the wind. I had no value in my life. Broken. She, as a result of getting pregnant through relationships, abortions, going through all that pain and hurt, and she's lost. She didn't know how to get out of it. One day she comes to a Bible study and she says, I got to, something has to change. And that Bible study, just one Bible study, come on, you're you're only five minutes away. You're only, come on, you're only a decision away. She got brought, her friend brought her in her lost condition. 
God brings you in your suffering condition. God brings you in your pain, in your hurt, your depression. Come on, the abuse you've been going through. And he says, come, I want to get your life back together. You were created to succeed. You were created to prosper. Follow my instructions. You know why me and Lisa, we share everything? Because we love you and we want to show we're just regular people like you. I got to fight to obey too. And there's errors I'm disobedient in. And in those errors I'm disobedient in, this is what happens. I don't have any joy in. You don't need a, right, so I get this. You don't need another pill for your depression. Maybe you just need to do this. Start obeying God. Well, I know they diagnosed me with, and I understand this, because they could diagnose the chemistry effect of your disobedience. Because your obedience or your disobedience changes your DNA. So it will affect your, your psychosis. It will affect your nerves. It will affect your health because you were created to obey. And when you're, this is what happens. When you're disobeying, this is what happens. You start experiencing separation from your health, separation from your joy, separation from, come on, a clear mind, separation from peace, separation from breakthrough, separation from purpose, separation from identity. And then once you get there, you say, man, I got to find some, but Lisa, you know what she did? They asked her, you want to receive Jesus? She did. She, I, I, it was in a home Bible study. I was there when Lisa got saved. It was a home Bible study. I decided to go to a Bible study on, on a Saturday. It was a Saturday. It was a home Bible study. It wasn't even people from our church. I decided that someone invited me. I showed up. She showed up. Someone invited her. She showed up. That day, something was going to happen that would change her destiny. Something was gonna happen to change the results. She will no longer be a failure. She will no longer be frustrated. She will no longer be lost. She will no longer be a nobody. Something happened that moment that changed her life forever. There was greatness in Lisa and she was one instruction away. I don't care what anybody's told you, or maybe they didn't tell you how awesome you are. They never told you how valuable you are. They never told you that they loved you. No one ever was there for you. Your mom maybe wasn't there. Your dad wasn't there. Everybody abused you that came into your life. But there's one tonight that's saying, all of that, I will turn it around because that's not my purpose for you. I'm letting you know I got a purpose. I pray that tonight's your night. Just listen. Don't fall asleep in here. This could turn your life around. So Lisa went up. I saw her walk up. She didn't care what no one thought. How how old are you, honey? 20 years old. She walks up. And... She starts crying, giving her life to Jesus. She got filled with God's spirit. She was no longer a nobody. She was now a daughter of God. She didn't even know she's going to be a pastor's wife. I didn't know my wife walked into the room. She didn't know her husband was in that room. She didn't know that we would transform thousands of people's lives and change cities all over the United States of America. And all it was was this, one decision. Lisa began to grow because she, I want you to get this. Could it be that you're not experiencing the success and the prosperity you should be experiencing because you're too slow to obey? What happened to Lisa, and I want you to get this, she had nothing to go back to. What am I going to go back to? And you, Go back to what? Go back to the depression? Go back to, she, Lisa was an insomniac. She, could, she couldn't sleep at night. Go back to the abusive relationship. Go back to the rapes. Go back to the abortions. Go back to the loneliness. Go back to that. You know what we're backsliding? This is the issue. We don't appreciate what Jesus did for us. 
You got, you got a fantasy of how your life used to be. What, strung out, acting crazy, being disloyal, lying, cheating, hurting everyone in your life, including yourself, and that's the life? Man, the devil's a deceiver. You're in the house of God, serving God, set free, have eternal life, finally succeeding in your life, and the devil gives you a fantasy. And you know where that fantasy has led you over and over. It's always just a fantasy. So Lisa gave her life to the Lord. Now what happened to Lisa? She, I've never, I mean, I've seen this a few times. She was one of them. She started hearing what God said and would do it. Hear it and 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 do it. With, she, she never read a book in her life and, and she was being taught, you need to read the Word and study God's Word continuously. And then she, you know what she did? She went into her room that night and she goes, God, I hate reading. You know me, I've never read a book in my whole life. But give me the desire to read your word. I'm going to do my best, but give me a desire. And that year, she read through the Bible. And then what ended up happening with Lisa, she started quoting scripture to me. I go, you just got saved. How dare you? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I grew up in the church, and this girl was now telling me where scripture was, and she started knowing scripture better than me. And I'll tell you why she knew Scripture better than me. Because she was reading it with appreciation. She was reading it with gratitude. She was reading it, I need this to nourish my life. Without this, I'm lost. I'm done. I'm a nobody. She was grateful. I saw the growth in her, and I go, man. And I prayed. I go, God, I want a woman of God that loves you more than she loves me. And I know this. This is one of the keys of loving God. You can't say you love God and you don't love his word. So when I saw her loving the Word, I go, man, I know she loves God. And I knew she loved the Word because she just didn't hear it. She applied it, and she loved it. Does anybody want some change in your life? Come on. It's time for me to start kicking the devil out of my life, kicking the lies out of my life, kicking the compromise out of my life, the, kicking the fantasies out of my life, kicking it out. So... I want to succeed. I want to thrive. I, I just want to say one more thing. Because I got stuck on Joshua 1-8 again. You know why we're still on 1-8? Because we got to get it. The Holy Spirit doesn't need to give you a different scripture until you get that one. Why would he give you another one? He goes, get that one first. Chew that one, digest that one, and, and then we'll go from there. Is anybody getting something from God? So we, we study the word. We study the word, con, we study the word uh, continuously. How do we study it? Just read a chapter a day at least. But take your time with it. Spend a half hour a day just studying the Bible. I can't understand. Don't worry about it. Just kick back. You know why you can't understand it? Because your mind is so, so absorbed with nonsense. You can't even think. You, so what, what you're doing is wrangling yourself and, get it and saying, God, give me some comprehension. And God will begin to give you comprehension. But sometimes you got to wrangle yourself, bring yourself in, turn off everything, turn off your phone, and, and just say, okay, I'm going to spend a half hour. Maybe it's 10 minutes. But every day, just get the ball rolling. Every day, continue. So I study and meditate on the Word for at least 10 minutes. Download our app. Listen to a, this preaching again. It's here one more time. Continuously. I told you guys this. I, I've been struck. I, I, God told me, Marco, he goes, there's something you do every day. That's watch YouTube. I know none of you guys do that, but I do that. You guys are all holy and everything. I know. Stop judging me. No. But I, and they even suggest what you should watch based on what you've been looking at. So if there's pornography coming on, I don't know how that got there. Yes, you've been Googling that stuff. To search it for you. Stop you. 
But, but I watch a lot of fights and, and I watch some politics and, and, and so they send me that stuff. And lately I've been watching this, Little Big Shots. There's those little cute kids that do some, and they keep sending me a little more Big Shots and I keep watching that stuff. And, but, but, but this is what I found out. I was getting absorbed with it and I would go from one video after another video, after another video, after another video. And then I would say this, I got no time to study and pray. Of course I don't got time to study and pray. I know everything about Donald Trump. I know everything about the politics. And I'm not hearing the latest news of what God wants to tell me. Come on, come on. No wonder I'm not witnessing to anybody. No wonder I'm not walking into the fire and the power I should be walking in. I'm not even connected to the Word long enough to get a real charge, a real breakthrough. Come on, it's time to get recharged. I pray we get this. Because when I'm in the spirit, man, ain't no stopping me. I witness to everybody. I witness to the dogs in the neighborhood. You know Jesus? You do need Jesus. I'm serious. I'm just looking because I'm in the spirit right now. It's time for you to get your fire back. It's time for you to start getting, come on, some winning streaks. You need to be off your losing streak and start getting some winning streaks. It's time for you to be called a success. Come on, if that's you, give God just one more pray. Wow, wasn't that just amazing? Would you give me the second and allow me to pray with you? Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we just come to you, Father, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the clarity and the revelation that you have brought forth, Father. I pray right now, God, for the brother or sister that's on the other side of this lens watching, God. I pray that you meet them right where they're at, God, and I pray that you meet all their needs according to your riches and your glory, Father. We give you honor, praise, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. So if this word has blessed you and you would like to partner with us, you can do so by clicking the link on the top or the link at the bottom. And WayFam, we'll see you on the next sermon.